My name is Javad Hajjahia and I'll present our work first link. First, I will give high level overview of the talk. Planar and virtual reality video streaming consumes significant system energy due to the high power consumption of major system components. Our goal is to improve energy efficiency of planar and VR video streaming by leveraging display panel local memory to eliminate buffering frames in main memory. Earthlink is a new planner and VR video streaming scheme that directly transfers a full decoded frame from the video decoder to the display panel completely bypassing the host theorem. It transfers a complete decoded frame to the display panel in a burst, exploiting the display interface's maximum bandwidth. We evaluate burst link using our open source analytical power model that we regressively validate on an Intel Skyrim mobile system. Burst link reduces system energy consumption of 4K planner and PR video streaming by 41% and 33% respectively. Burst link provides an even higher energy reduction in future planner video streaming systems with higher display resolutions and or display refresh rates. Here is the outline of the talk today. I'll begin with a brief overview of mobile SOC microarchitecture. A conventional display subsystem consists of five main components. In the processor side, video decoder, display controller, and in the display panel side, embedded display port receiver, pixel formatter, remote frame buffer, which stores the current frame for self-refresh of the LCD when displaying a static image. Planar video processing consists of three main stages, buffering the encoded frames, decoding the buffered frames, and displaying the decoded frames. I will now discuss the motivation and the goal of our work. There are two problems in video processing. The first problem is the unnecessary data movement to and from host memory, and the second problem is the underutilization of display interface bandwidth. In current video processing schemes, the video decoder stores each decoded frame into the frame buffer in the host DRAM. This is necessary only when there exist other planes in addition to the video plane. All other times, there is no need to access the host DRAM. DC reads the data chunk from each plane's frame buffer, generates one composite chunk out of them and send the composite chunk to the display. Our goal is to prevent unnecessary data movement to and from the host DRAM with minimal changes to the current mobile SOC microarchitectures. We prevent unnecessary data movement via frame buffer bypassing technique that we describe later. The DC sends decoded frame data to the display panel in a constant rate during the entire frame window keeping the DC and the EDP receiver continuously active. The transfer rates of the DC, EDP receiver, and pixel formatter are tightly coupled and bottlenecked by the pixel formatter. The video interface bandwidth is underutilized during the video streaming. For example, only half of the maximum bandwidth is utilized in 4K video streaming. Our goal is to eliminate the bottleneck in the display panel so that the system directly transfer a full decoded frame from the video decoder to the display panel in a burst, thus increasing system idleness. We eliminate the bottleneck at the display panel via frame bursting that we describe later. Now, I will explain the techniques to achieve our goal. The frame buffer bypassing technique redirects the processed frame from the video decoder to the display controller via the on-chip interconnect if two conditions are satisfied. The VD receives a signal from the DC indicating that only the video plan needs to be displayed. The VD driver sets a flag in the VD indicating that only a single video application is running. Frame buffer bypassing reduces the energy consumption of the host DRAM by eliminating unnecessary data movement to and from the DRAM frame buffer. The frame bursting technique transfers the decoded frame from the processor to the display panel in bursts. 
The display panel receives a full frame over the EDP interface and store it directly into the double remote frame buffer. The pixel formatter can fetch the frame data from the double remote frame buffer at the rate required by a given configuration to generate pixels and send them to the LCD display. The frame bursting technique reduces the utilization of the processor and the display subsystem. The system can enter deep low power states between bursts for transferring the decoded frame from the DC to the remote frame buffer. There are more details in the paper. For example, system power states in burst link. There are more details in the paper on power states of the system that supports burst link. Implementation and hardware costs of double remote frame buffer, destination selector, change to power management firmware, generalization of burst link techniques to other scenarios in modern mobile systems, like video capture, audio streaming, video chat, social networking, and interactive games. I will next present our evaluation of burst link. I will first present our methodology. We validate our power model against power measurements from a real modern mobile device that is based on the Intel Skylink architecture. We use the Keysight Power Analyzer for system power measurements. We use planar and PR video streaming workloads that are used in standard industrial benchmarks for battery life and academic evaluation of video streaming optimizations. Berkling reduces the overall system energy consumption by 37% for a full high definition display. Frame buffer bypassing and frame bursting reduce overall energy by 31% and 23% compared to the baseline respectively. Burstlink's energy reduction increases as display resolution increases. For a 5K display, Burstlink reduces the overall system energy by 32%. Burstlink reduces the overall system energy consumption by up to 33%. Memory energy dominant workloads have higher benefits compared to compute energy dominant since burst link greatly reduces memory energy. Burst link benefits decreases as VR display resolution increases. Compute energy become more dominant in VR workloads as display resolution increases. Higher compute energy decreases only the relative contribution of burst links memory energy savings. There are other results on the paper, for example, effect of video frame rate on burst link benefits. Burst links energy consumption reduces as the video frame rate increases. Comparison of burst link to existing techniques. 29% lower energy consumption than frame buffer compression. 35% lower energy consumption than rest to sleep, content caching, and display caching techniques. Benefits of burst link to other mobile workloads. 40% lower energy consumption when playing local video files with different resolutions. Frame buffer bypassing reduces energy between 12% and 31% on for mobile workloads, video capturing, video conferencing, casual gaming, and mobile mark. Let me quickly conclude my talk. Planar and virtual reality video streaming consume significant system energy due to the high power consumption of major system components. Our goal is to improve the energy efficiency of planar and VR video streaming by leveraging display panel local memory to eliminate buffering frames in memory. BurstLink is a new planar and VR video streaming scheme that directly transfers a full decoded frame from the video decoder to the display panel, completely bypassing the host DRAM.
It also transfers a completely coded frame to the display panel in a burst, exploiting the display interface's maximum bandwidth. We validate burst link using our open source and ethical power model that we rigorously validated on an Intel Skylake mobile system. Burst link reduces the energy consumption of 4K planar and VR video streaming by 41 and 33% respectively. Burstlink provides an even higher energy reduction in future planar video streaming systems with higher display resolutions and or display refresh rates. Thanks for your attention. For more details, I invite you to read our Micro 2021 paper.